What's up, you all? Hope you're doing great. I'm a little bit late to the party with my movie review on Dune 2, but I thought that I still will make it because I just love the movie so much. In fact, let me tell you something. I watched it twice in the theater. That was never the plan, but somehow, you know, I took a road trip to Dallas and I was like, hey, I might, might as well watch it again because I watched it back home. And uh, it's, it's incredible because I don't remember as much as I watched a lot of movies, you know, like Matrix, maybe when I was a child I watched Harry Potter like 20 times and most at home right but something about in my adulthood to watch a movie twice in the theater and like pay for it twice which by the way obviously pain is not the problem it's just like the idea of committing second time was so unusual I was like do I really love this movie that much I think I do but I also wanted to unpack what it is that potentially made me love it so much and uh, maybe to discuss any potential flaws or just you know pick your brain in terms of what you liked and you what you didn't right so the first thing I want to say I think this movie it has been just you know super refreshing and I have to say that's just the reality we live in right among other Hollywood blockbusters that are agenda driven with certain ideologies you know shoved in our up, up in our throat this movie obviously stands out because it didn't feel like it was the case right it didn't feel like they were pushing something at least didn't feel to me so vividly like may maybe a lot of other movies and a lot of famous movies based on sci science fiction comics or whatnot they don't bring that enjoyment anymore and so there is some mistrust here in terms of like going and watching something because you always try like as an adult at least you can scan it right what, what I worry about is sometimes younger folks might not scan the the, the information or the, the ideas that certain story or movie presents and they will just try to look at it as entertainment but then those ideas will crawl on the back of their mind and they might start believing in them right not everybody has enough power to understand what is the story uh, whether it's fictional or not but anyways that's one thing that's where I think the contrast comes from right it feels like the movie may be not as amazing as we, th we you may think it's just the contrast between this movie and many others makes it you know sort of elevated if you will in a similar fashion like the show Reacher right everybody was loaning for a strong masculine figure in the shows because this time anybody who is you know white straight or Christian is persecuted just by for being that and of course males predominantly but yeah Reacher stood out again it was not like a humongous difference from some of the things we've seen maybe 20 30 years ago because there is that contrast it makes look like absolutely astonishing right not to again to discount the the great work that the director producer and the actors put into the and everybody else put into the whether it's richer show or, or this movie dune which we will unpack in a second but the other part again and I, I kind of touched on it already is this idea of having a masculine figure among both the protagonist and the antagonist now the reality is this movie has a lot of strong women in and one of them is lead actor Zendaya playing the character Chani right and it's a wonderful character by the way and she did a great job in my opinion in terms of playing her and depicting her and it didn't feel like it's out of the way crazy or anything although it, it's a fictional story let's start from this a fictional world they learn fictional skills some of the fighting skills or technology they use is not out of this world and now not out of this reality so it's maybe not fully fair for me to assess the validity of women's skills in fighting compared to men in the ratio because yeah she was so powerful against some of the strong men of the other house in real life the ratio is a little bit lower right even um, Amanda Nunes the, the UFC champion amazing strong woman a lot of men who are untrained just because of the physical natural advantage can still overpower her in an actual you know violent fight or even in a controlled mixed martial arts fight you always have to keep in mind to not push a little bit too far because what you don't want yes we want to empower women to be strong sure have no problem with that but we don't want to empower them to be delivered delusional that's also important right it didn't feel like it in this movie and again I don't want to go into the weeds of assessing how realistic is that that a lot of women there would, would kill men in an instant like this the, the brutal killers but I would give it that, that assessment to you guys and let me know what you think but it didn't feel like an agenda for sure it felt like it was equal it felt like she understood that the that Paul will be a leading force despite the fact that she was humble to say even there is a quote right I would love to be uh, an equal to you so I'm paraphrasing a little bit but the premise is that he fell in love obviously and he respects her her power her, her skills her attitude her maybe principles and, and that's what's inspiring him right and vice versa 
at the same time. But all to say, strong masculine figure is great. We are missing it in, in the movies. We are missing it in the Hollywood hero making machine, which is off these days by a lot. So the other thing would be, which by the way, I also touched on it again, pretty much, you know, strong women, sure. I just not, not got going into the delusion land. So far, I think it's all good there. I think it's all good. So kudos to, to the creators once again. Now, this is the basic thing, but I should mention it because it's so good. The cinematics, right? The, the whether it was CGI or stunts or you name it just such a beautiful world like ma made me want to go to Sahara Desert or somewhere to, to go for pilgrimage and just like not just like some vacation and f for tourism but actual you know live in a desert so to speak experience and uh, just wonderful to see how it was all so interconnected and it, it, it immersed you into that world right it, it was beautiful and that was paired with another thing which I love about this movie is uh, uh, the music obviously Hans Zimmer I love this you know composer he's absolutely probably the best in the last decades uh, in, in the world but obviously it was not only him it was also a few others I believe the Paul's dream song the the track right film score then there is uh, a few others that are so famous and so cool now that basically everybody's doing guitar covers or you name it right it's just the melody is so cool I listen to it all the time I'm like oh my gosh I want to stop listening so that I don't I, I, I don't want to start hating it because I love it so much right and another interesting thing is that Dune 2 to me was much more I don't know how to say it, like it was much more clear well-rounded uh, connected the story just spoke to me right to be fair I never read the books so for I'm judging from a different lens somebody who is a fan of books may have a different perspective but for me as a, somebody who was just introduced to this story from like scratch Dune 1 was a little bit cumbersome in some places where it was like what's going on why it's going on like I I couldn't understand why why behind certain events it doesn't mean that the movie was done bad it could be my personal subjective sort of viewpoint in terms of how I felt about the movie but I'm just saying Dune 2 came to life the story came to life everything came to life in such an integrated manner I felt like it's much stronger movie than Dune 1 I might be wrong I'm curious what you think but I loved it there is one more important point I forgot which is the faith the faith principles in the story which again goes back to the books I do recognize the fact that it was sort of a propaganda by uh, done by those women in power that created a story that some that, that the Fremen would believe in and uh, all that but then at the same time it was beautiful to see the faith elements and it's also cool and, and interesting the fact that I'm making this video on Easter he has risen our Lord Jesus Christ and and this will be posted later but today is the Easter Sunday and I'm just saying like I don't even care what the, the ideas behind behind that fictional faith war or well I do but I'm, I'm just saying it was beautiful to see somewhere in a Hollywood movie that there is something about faith and to depict characters in such a committed and devoted way to that faith and even to the point of, of um, I forgot his name a great character that was played by Javier by uh, Bardem the one who believed the most right who instructed Paul he at some point in the movie said I don't care what you believe in I believe so he even said if you don't believe in yourself as our prophet I believe in you because I've seen enough science and all uh, those things but it's just so interesting and mesmerizing and you know I just want more faith driven even conceptually movies and shows because the reality is we need that we need God we need faith and we need somewhere to lean on and to cast our anxieties too because if you don't have that then instead we are going to the hedonistic hall of you know doing drugs do, doing um, you know wasting ourselves in um, unstoppable nightlife or sexual desires or you name it you know the whole drill I don't even need to tell you that so yeah that also struck me I just loved it so much the last thing I was gonna say was that I'm actually sad. I'm sad that the director mentioned that the third movie, the next one, right, will be the last movie about the Paul's journey. Now, it's probably fair considering that they are trying to depict books and then there are plenty of other stories that don't involve Paul, I guess, that are after him or maybe prequels, I'm not sure. Yeah, so the premise is there, but then again, I almost want like more. I want more. I want five movies about Paul's journey because it's just so cool. I love I love his character. I love how he came to be uh, Madib, the prophet 
love it. I love uh, everything about that story and I cannot wait to see the third movie, but I really want more. I don't know, maybe they will figure out some show because it's so hard to create, you know, to depict stories like that in movies because the show gives time and space for the character to breathe, so to speak. And especially with modern day shows where they have so much more budgets than they used to, it almost feels sometimes that the show can be better than a movie. But I do understand it's a harder commitment and then you have 8, 10, 15 episodes and even for consumer it's like some people just don't have capability and time to watch 15 hours worth of a season right they just want to go and watch a movie so i do appreciate that it's in a movie sort of uh, framework but again i just hope that we will find ways to prolong that story and maybe dune has the potential to become as culturally renowned as star wars and and in fact somebody in the comment section was saying that i think dune books were way earlier than the star wars books i don't know i'm not gonna jump into that debate i'm gonna let you handle it guys but i'm just saying i would love the dune world and dune universe to be expanded everywhere be it shows movies and video games so yeah we shall see once again thank you for watching this was like a quick uh, movie review and more some of my perspective around the story how it was depicted the agenda less movie that give us enjoyment and the fact that i watched it twice and probably the reason to share with you was just to see what you think and maybe find like-minded individuals or disagree on some of these points whatever it is i felt compelled that i need to make a review on this movie because it just touched me so much so thank you so much again and i will see you in the next one